Ah, good morning. Good morning. I am Buddha. Welcome, Buddha. I have come to talk to you today about the third chakra. Thank you. The solar plexus, as you call it. We call it the yellow sun when I was a child. The sun chakra, because it was yellow. Yes. It, it is a chakra that is very interesting and something that I could learn at a young age. It was about destiny and planning and about who you are and who you want to be. And it is connected to the other two that I have already spoken to you about, the root chakra and the sacral, as you call it. Remember now, I'm going to give you a little re testing. The root chakra, that is the one that connects you to the Mother Earth. That is the one that grounds you the most, but not only grounds you. The other two chakras above it ground you as well, because they are the lower earthly chakras. The heart is in center, and the three upper ones are the chakras of the universe and the sky and enlightenment. However, Remember that the grounding of yourself is important to be able to reach out of the third dimension. Those who live in the fourth dimension and do not ground themselves to the third cannot communicate with those in the third. They will not understand you. Do you understand? Yes. So therefore, let's move up to the sun chakra, which I call the sun chakra, you call it the solar plexus. Remember that the orange second chakra is the creative chakra. And think about that for a moment. I, let me enlighten you with something. The creator, as it is, this chakra makes you a creator. The sexual chakra brings creation to your world, does it not? Think about that, that your God, when he was in the creative mode, was working from his second chakra. Remember that? Wow. So he has much more enlightenment above him. Do you understand? So now let's go to the yellow chakra. And it shows you who you are in this life. It connects to the other two so well because creation, Mother Earth, Mother Earth, creation, and then identity. Do you see that? Identity, who you are on this earth, your perfect self coming up from Mother Earth, rising to the third level. Do you understand? Yes. And this means that you can help yourself by connecting all these three together so that whenever you are not grounded, you may go to the solar plexus because it is co-connected with all these below. And then you can reach the sacral. And then you can reach the root. When I was young, a boy, just, and they were teaching me about the solar plexus and the sun. Why they called it the sun was because it, it brightens the lower chakras. It brightens the lower chakras because this is what happens. Yes, you have your creative your connection to the earth, you have your sexuality, and then you have meaning for it all, right here. Of course, meaning is everywhere, but this is the beginning of where the meaning starts for you when you're coming up through the chakras. Here is your meaning and understanding. I know some may disagree, but think about it. This is the meaning where you plan to move forward, where you plan to move up to the heart chakra, your throat chakra, the third eye, 
and the crown. So this is your jumping board, your trampoline, as they call it, to the next chakra, which is the heart. The heart is the center, th three, four down and four up, or three down and three up if you want. It's the center. And it's where everything comes together. So when you see the, the chakras moving up toward the heart, you also feel it coming down to the heart. It is the center. And therefore, this chakra is to be put in emphasis of getting to the heart. And how do you do that? your intention for this chakra when you find yourself looking for directions in your life, looking for places to go and jobs, what you call jobs, you must connect it higher. You see how it moves up? Yes. Connect your job search to the heart. Yes. Uh -huh. Your highest intention, as some might say, your highest excitement, as some might say. I have heard that said by many. But here is where it all comes together for the lower chakras, you see. These are the lower chakras, and they come together here. Yes. And then they move up. So, when you are planning your life, when you are looking forward to your highest excitement, this is where your sun is. Because it will brighten your life to move into a place of high excitement. Does this make sense to you? Yes, yes, perfect sense. And then, when you move up to the heart, you could speak for a hundred years about what the heart does. Because it is the connection of all things. It is the beginning of telepathy. It is the beginning of upward movement in your, not only in your spirit, but in your flesh and in your emotions as well. You see, you have been already explained that the heart is the beginning of telepathy, which we will get to in another time. But solar plexus, the heart and the solar plexus are connected with that first. First, you are connected with the heart and the solar plexus when you're thinking of telepathy. Why? Because the sun in here has a lot to do with intention. What you intend to do with your life. What you intend to do with your highest excitement. What you intend to bring to those around you and the world. Do you understand? Because then these two are connected with telepathy because you will know how someone else is feeling or what they intend to do before you even speak to them. Because these two are connected and then when you move up in your vibration you will connect to the third eye. And then these will be all that you need to connect for telepathy to be full. But then, when you actually come to someone with telepathy, your telepathy, all chakras will be right there with them. Do you understand? All the chakras will be brought into light with telepathy. And with intimacy, all chakras will be connected to those that you love, or intimate lovers. Do you understand? Yes. In friendship? Friendship, they connect in one way. For lovers, it connects in another. But I was not understanding of that when I was a child. I'm, I'm starting to tell you about the heart as well because there's so much to tell about the heart. The next time I come to tell about the heart chakra, you will already have some information about it, which you already, most of you I can tell, 
already understand many things about the chakras. Many things. And remember, all your chakras have a shadow behind them of all the past lives you have lived and all the different occupations are there within that heart chakra. I mean the, I'm sorry, the sun chakra for me. And in all the chakras there are past lives that are shadowed behind them. You bring them along and that is why you have deja vu. That is why you have thoughts that are important from other past lives. That is why other past lives affect you. Is because your chakras all have memories of the, all the past lives. So therefore, they can be brought back into understanding. I am sorry if I'm not being clear. It is hard to put into words what I'm trying to say. But know this, that you can learn from your past because there are lives that you were not happy. There were lives when you were not fulfilled. And these were occupations that were not of the highest light. However, you had to learn those. Why? To understand what the highest vibration is. You have to learn the other vibrations to appreciate the greater vibrations. Ah, that I was not aware of as a child. But when I did my regressions with my with my priests, as you might call them, monks, as you might call them. They were able to guide me into a way that I understood who I was and how I got to be who I am. This was important for the way I lived my life as a teacher. I will leave you now, but if there is anyone that has a question... Um, I do. Yes. You know, there are many children who are abused. Yes. Uh, either by their parents or not by their parents and also sexually abused. Um, do the chakras ever get damaged to the point where it's almost impossible to repair them? And if so, um, how can a chakra be repaired if it can be damaged? There are ways to repair the chakras. But first, the person must be willing. That is the first thing. If they are willing for their chakras to be healed, healing a chakra is not that difficult. However, the emotions, the body, the spirit have all been affected by mm -hmm. a damaged chakra. Yes. But... There are ways, if they come to you, or if you come to them, and they are willing to give you permission to heal their chakras, it can be done. We will have a session on that sometime. Okay. And one more question, Buddha. When people are sexually intimate, their chakras unite, correct? With telepathy, yes. Oh, so... Like if somebody has a lot of sexual partners, I understood that their energies are constantly connecting and disconnecting and connecting and disconnecting, and this can be damaging eventually. Do you see it that way? In telepathy, yes. There would be damage done if the chakras were used that way too often and mm -hmm. with numerous partners. It mm -hmm. could happen. They can be healed. They can be restored. However, partners are very special people, supposedly. If, and if you attach your mind to a partner, there is an oath there with them. Do you understand? If it is a, a very close relationship, but there are those who have many partners that they do not share their chakras with at all. 
they only share their physicality. That is it. That can be damaging as well in some ways with diseases mm -hmm. and things of that nature, but mm -hmm. it is not a chakra connection. Okay. Thank you. Can I also ask a question? Yes. Is appropriate? Uh, ascension? Yes. Or would it be the key of the ascension would be shifting from third to the fourth chakra? With dimensions? From the third chakra, from solar plexus to heart chakra. Is it the essence of ascension? The e no, I, it is not. The essence of ascension is the essence of ascension that I believe you're speaking of is to bring the world population. You're talking about personal ascension, correct? Mm, both personal and collective. Ah, they're, they are two different things. Ascension of the group is when the group connects as a community and rises together. The ascension of an individual can be separate or with the connection because, let me tell you why, You're, you are with the others in your emotional, in your spiritual growth, in your spiritual output, but you are not connected by the words and by the, by the thoughts of those. Until you become connected with the ascension that way, then you're doing it on your own. But you're rising, yes, if you rise from the sun to the heart, that is an ascension of sorts, because your vibration must have come up. Do you understand? Yes. And then you can connect that ascension with the world ascension, which is something the same but separate. Do you understand? Yes, yes. So, yes, in the sense that you are moving in a higher dimension. It is not a fourth dimension, though. It it's is just not. No, it is a, just an ascension to that vibration. The ascension to fourth dimension comes from the third eye in the crown. Oh. So, but yes, it is an ascension of sorts that does not include fourth dimensional energy, but it is third. You, you see, you must be totally third dimensional before you can reach the fourth dimension. And under, uh, well, that's not so either. You can reach the fourth dimensional, but to be third dimensional fully and then reach the fourth dimension is much more enlightening in the sense that you will be able to communicate the fourth dimensional information to those in the third dimension. Without the third dimensional completion, wholeness, this cannot be communicated properly. Mm -hmm. It can be communicated, but it's in bits and pieces, and people will not understand. It's like your Bible. It is all bits and pieces of knowledge and information and times and pasts, but it needs to be connected together to make sense in some ways. Do you understand? Yes. But, yes, moving from the sun to the heart is a rise in vibration, but not in fourth dimension. I see. And the veil of forgetfulness, veil from separating the third and fourth dimension. Yes. Would it be the veil between heart and solar plexus or elsewhere? Elsewhere. Your heart, you can veil your heart, yes, but you will not rise above that veil. You, when you unveil your heart and move, continue to move up, there can be a veil at the crown. There can be a veil at any chakra level. And that is because you do not know how to get to the next chakra level. Do you understand? Yes. When, but when you get to the third eye, and if there is a veil on the third eye, this is a problem because you will never get to the fourth dimension without the third eye opening ah. or being at least partially open. Ah. So... Pray intentionally 
as someone said about intentional meditation, oh, someday we will talk about meditation. So many of you do it wrong. But the third dimensional meditation with intention can open up the full third eye and bring forth dimensional energy in. But um, what is surprising to me now? I must change the subject. Of course, please do. What is, an, what is very interesting to this generation is that your fourth dimensional energy is awakening as fourth dimensional energy is being released as of 12, 21, 12, your eyes are opening. They cannot help but open because you have within you fourth dimensional energy. So that veil, if your eyes are opening, that veil cannot be there. So you know, those of you who know and felt the fourth dimensional energy are speaking in other languages, are starting to talk to aliens through your system. You have awakened this fourth dimensional energy within you and it has become part of you. So therefore ground yourself completely so that you can make the most of this fourth dimensional energy because that is the only way that it will be most effective. Of course it can be effective without total grounding, but you have to understand connection to Earth and fourth dimension brings it all together. You see, we are just aligned to the universe, to the light, to the Creator, and without connecting all the points from Earth to sky, you cannot understand fully the messages that come. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes, perfect. Thank you. Hi, I Buddha. Yes. Just one small thing. Yes. Uh, what about the, the chakra points in the planet? Can they be damaged? Is is something damaged? In the what? In the planet. Ah, oh, the chakras of the planet. You may heal those as well as a group. You see, as your vibration moves up, you affect the Earth's vibration as well. However, there are still very, very many that have low vibration and very, very many that feel that the Earth is just to be used and not to be respected. You have a good point, though. The heart of the earth is in a certain place. I believe you call it, the, actually the earth has two heart chakras because they are on the other side of each other. Why is this? It's because it is necessary for mother earth to be dualistic. Does this make sense? Yes, yes, perfect sense, yes. So. She has two hearts. The one heart, the first heart, the perfect heart, where if you take your intentions and go there, they will be amplified, would be a place called Hawaii, you call it. It is called Hawaii. Yes. And it is a heart chakra, very, very right there in, oh, I cannot say the name, but it is right there. Did I answer your question? You can help heal the earth by giving it energy, offer it energy, offer it anything that about you that you do not like and ask it to change that energy and recycle it and make it into good energy for her healing. Anytime you offer Mother Earth energy, put your hands down so that the energy can come out of your hands to the Earth and tell her that you are giving her an offering from yourself 
or from the universe. And you can help heal the earth that way. But, but I, Other ways to heal the earth are to be respectful to her. Buddha, is it the island Kauai in Hawaii that is the heart? It could be. I cannot pronounce it. I see perhaps, I see Hawaii. There is a spot, perhaps it is Kauai, is that what you said? Ka yes. Ye because what I understand is that islands were interesting to eat beings. Ah. Oh. Well, that would be the place then. Yes, and I'm traveling from fourth to third right now to ground yeah. myself. That is a hard journey. From fourth to third dimension is a hard journey when you start in fourth and do not know third at all, or or do not know third is truth. You know of its vision and what it, you feel it should be. But what it should be is not what you feel in the third dimension. I mean fourth dimension. You have to be in the third dimension to actually feel the third dimension. And to understand it. It's more physical. It's more dense. It's more lower vibration in the sense that it is connecting to the earth of mother but it must be that way i do not i do not how to ex expound on the fact that the lower vibrations are necessary to understand the higher vibrations does this make sense to you all am i speaking in an understandable way. Yes. Very much. Yeah. Very much. Yes. Very good. Buddha. Is there any more questions? Yes, I have a question. Yes. But first, I would like to ask you if you wish to leave or to stay a little longer, for I am aware you are were wishing to leave. Ah. It is not that I am wishing to leave. It is that I have so much time to some, tell you what I have to say, and then I am called away. Yes. But if you have a question, please ask. Yes. And I will I stay understand. as long as I can. Yes, I understand. Thank you for the opportunity. I was just trying to make sure it was appropriate. To Thank you for your, your presence. Compassion. Yes. Thank you for your presence. You spoke to the nature of the solar plexus. Yes. You spoke specifically about the shadow aspect and the conditioning forces both in past lives and also in current life. Correct. My question is, or what I would like to have you share is on the topic of practices to deepen our awareness and release conditioning from our solar plexus. Is uh, that understandable? Yes, you want to be more aware yes. of who you are and why you're here and how to release it if you do not know. Is that correct? Yes, in part, but also the patterns, the conditioning that we bring both from past lives and especially from this life, which yeah. somehow brings resistance and less than optimal function of the solar plexus. Yes, I understand. I did not explain that even in your highest excitement, that does not always happen. And why does that not always happen? The conditions around you are sometimes not favorable for your highest excitement to happen. You can have it. You can 
continue to work toward it and bring it into the heart. But sometimes the things around you bring you down. The thing is, you must find a way to push out the negative. A good practice for this is to welcome everyone, negative or positive. Welcome every action, negative or positive, and then agree that you will remain positive. Does that make sense to you at all? Yes, it is quite profound. You must agree to remain in your positive state because this is the what you call the law of attraction and it works for your highest and greatest excitement as well as for your entire being. Does that make sense? Yes. Let's choose that even though the negative is pushing on you, pulling on you, or pushing you and hurting you, you must remain positive because, you know, that is not going to last. That is only a portion of your experience, only a portion of your life. And then, once you remain in the positive state, which is difficult. I'm not saying that it is easy. And sometimes it has to let go and you have to have a, it has to fall. But bring it back up. Remember all the positive things that have happened to you. All the wonderful, loving things that will bring you back to that state where you should be to be still moving forward. Do not accept the negative as reality. Your reality is in the positive, not in the negative. Does this make sense to you? Yes. Yes. I have is a there another part of the question I did not answer? I believe there is. Yes, I have a small detail I would like to clarify if that is appropriate. That is fine. You I may speak the English better than me. <laughs> yes. Um, my understanding is that the solar plexus is the center of emotion. Is that correct? Emotion, did you say? Yes, emotion. Emotion is centered there into a point, but you must understand that all the all the chakras have their center of emotion. Even wow. the do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. That is a huge center of emotion. But the heart has a center of emotion. The the communication has a center of emotion. They all have their centers. That one might be brighter in the sense that it is your highest excitement, do you understand? And that's yes. excitement is emotion. But each chakra unto itself can contain, has to contain a center of emotion. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes. For you to be a full being, to be a full third dimension, each part of you, each chakra, even the smaller chakras, have an attachment to emotion. Otherwise, you would not be able to get sick because of a negative emotion. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. If a negative emotion comes into one of your chakras and it manifests into the body, that is emotional. Yes. It's emotional illness. Does that make sense to you? Yes. I believe I have that experience in my body right now. Yes. So you understand that, yes, perhaps the sun chakra has more emotions to deal with, perhaps, 
but each chakra has its own center of emotions. Yes, that's precisely what I, I was trying to refer to before. Ah, then you are Star correct. The stored emotions in the solar plexus but from there's... this life and former lives are a big uh, challenge to deal with during this life. That's yeah. what I was trying to understand further and ask practices to deal with about. Yes. Your practices are... It is difficult to, to have a practice for positivity. Is it not? When the world is so negative around you, I was fortunate. I was very fortunate that those around me had much higher values than what I see around your earth today. There are those of you that have very high values and very high uh, vibrations compared to those of the past. But it is hard to stay positive in a world like this. But your what I was telling you about your practices, intention your meditations, become better meditators, research, research meditation, because some of you cannot achieve it even, and it is necessary to ward off the evil that could come to you. It is necessary to ward off the word evil is not correct, but it is a strong word. Do you understand? Yes, the lower frequencies. The lower frequencies, yes. So learn to meditate and intention your meditations. This is very important in this time, in this day and age. Thank Meditation you. is very important. Research it. Learn how to do it properly. And learn how to make it part of your daily routine because it will help you to grow. It will help you to be more enlightened. Because the spirit of meditation and intention will be with you. And they will understand what direction you are moving and why you are moving there. I say also, speak it. In this day and age, you have to speak it. There's too much going on in the minds of today's people. I come from a simpler time. Speaking it was not necessary. Your higher self and spirit guides could hear every thought because they were very plain and we had a simple life. We weren't concerned about many, many things. As today, there are many, many thoughts many densities in the mind, worries, difficulties, and the spirit guides can sometimes understand where you're going, but other times there's too much going on there. Speak it. If you want it to be heard, speak it. I've told others in other parts of the world the same thing. And your alien friends have told you similar things as well. Yes. But in this day and age, things are different. And things must be clear. And things must be understood clearly. Does this make sense to you? Yes, very much so. So Thank I would you. like you to learn proper meditation. Some of you know it. Some, some of you meditate in a very good and real way. But you must learn to meditate in a way that brings you up, centers you, grounds you, and presents opportunity to you even. Yes, meditation can do that. Buddha, I have a question about meditation. Yes. Because when, if I may, Jaguar, um, ask this question. Yes. Jack, is that okay? Thank you. Jaguar, are you okay with her asking a question? Yes, and it's perfect because I would like also to further the understanding of specific techniques you would like to suggest on that, on how to deepen our practice to release emotions and further that process. 
you are very wise. Um, I would just like to ask you, whenever I try to meditate, I'm out. I, I go, I just, it's not even to sleep, it's sort of like passing out. So I'm wondering if there's something blocking my, um, either I'm going into my subconscious in that moment and I'm not aware of it, or there's something blocking me going in, to, in there. No, you are fine. No, I think a lot of people do that. Let me explain something to you. There is not just one kind of meditation. The kind of meditation you do is very helpful for you. It gives you rest and understanding and brings you into balance and sharpens your chakras. There are other kinds of meditation that make awareness greater, that make intention greater, that make all these other things slightly better. Now, you must learn more than one kind of meditation. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. You may not have to use that kind of meditation every day. You may find that one kind of meditation works best for you daily, and then other kinds of meditation work for specific things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could talk about that for a great amount of time, because there are... Do you all understand that there's different kinds of meditations? Yes, it was very helpful to find it out, yes. There are many kinds of meditations, and you should seek out the ones that resonate with you, and then use them to, to bring up your vibration and to find your highest excitement if you don't know what it is, or to achieve your highest excitement if you do know what it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Buddha. You're welcome. <coughs> All right. Can I ask a question? Uh, be very quick. Oh, it's it's all right. I, I I want to always look at safety first, and if you feel it's it's. Um... I'm not in any danger. Okay. Um, do you know of the Council of Creators? I know of them. Yes. I am not one of them. Do you know of our unique creator for our uh, system and his unique? Uh, his love of variety? Yes. <laughs> what is your question? Do you... Do you... Um, Gordon? Do they, does it, Gordon, correct. Namaste and blessings for being here. Thank you so much. Um, do you feel that the current council's uh, creators... I'm trying to remember exactly if they, if they like giving advice or exactly giving guidance, how they word it... Um, do they have any thoughts on our current status or any advice from the creators um, on what we can be doing uh, better or any insights yeah. at all? Their insight is that you're all too selfish. You have too small of a world. Your world is a few people and not the entire world. But now that you are becoming enlightened, your world is the entire world. Your family is the entire population. They would like you to see you connect to the world and give to the world as you would give to those that you love dearly. Mm. And the reason for this is because the world is not going to change until you have a community thought. A thought of giving love to each other daily, and not just those who are close by, but those that are far away as well. Like this, community gives love to one another. Do you see what I'm saying? You have yes. gained friends and love all over the world from one spot, but yet it must be bigger. There must yes. be, in your prayers and enlightenment and your meditations when you learn them. You must love the world, even the bad parts, because how is the world going to see the light unless there's light shed upon it? Yes. 
Yes. I get emotional when talking about that. Namaste. I will use my mind, body, and spirit complex to help whatever in whatever way I can. Yes. Thank you. That was their that is their first message. There are many. But Blessing. for now, I am gonna let you go. Namaste. 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 Thank you, Buddha. Much Namaste, love Thank you to you. Much love to you that are gaining love every day. Use your love wisely. <laughs>